Hello guys, yes, welcome. Welcome to another video. Uh, today we are going to be talking about the tone curve in Lightroom. Yes, this is another live tutorial. A long time ago when I started using Lightroom, um, I never actually used the tone curve. I just went in and did kind of the basics and mess around with the, the HSL tabs, the, the hue and saturation and stuff like this. Um, and the tone curve was always there, kind of looking at me like, oh, it's a bit confusing, not really know how to go about it, how to approach this weird line um, in a box so yeah and back then there was not there was not many kind of Lightroom tutorials about on, on YouTube so I ended up just kind of playing with it myself clicking around um, the line and see what it does and figuring it out that way but you guys have it easy you have a tutorial which I'm going to show you so um, it's gonna be a much more easier way of understanding of how the tone curve works um, or what the points do where you plot them um, along the curve where the highlights are, where the shadows are, and where the blacks are. Also we can dive into kind of the RGB tone curves as well with the reds, green and blue. Um, but that might be for a separate video uh, because tone curve is kind of, I think it's one of the bigger factors of, of when editing in Lightroom. It's really gonna help you make your photos consistent, whether you're editing for a client and you want kind of five to 10 photos to be, to be consistent within the bunch and kind of your Instagram feeds uh, for website and everything like this, the tone curve is gonna help you with consistency also, it's going to help you understand aspects within your photos, so like the shadows, the highlights, midtones, and the blacks and the whites and all that stuff. It's going to allow you to kind of break down a photo um, and think, yeah, if I change that, that's going to change that part of the image. So the tone curve is definitely one to master if you are a Lightroom user. Um, definitely recommend using the tone curve um, along with the basics and the, the hue saturation and luminance tabs and all that and so forth. So let's dive right in. Let's get the screen recorder rolling and let me show you some of this magic that the tone curve can do. Let's go ahead into develop. Yeah, it's kind of hard picking the photos for this one. Um, I wanted to do it on a portrait, but kind of implementing landscape as well, so we can see what the tone curve can do here. So I picked this shot, I really like this shot. Um, it's my girlfriend on the edge of Old Harry Rocks down in Dorset. She's doing quite a cool pose, um, and you can see the rocks in the background. Okay, so if you are a regular Lightroom user, you would know that there's the, the basic tab on the right hand side, and then under it is the tone curve. Um, on the left, then you've got all your presets and stuff, collections and all that jazz and history. Okay, that's what you get. You get the, the basics on the side, on the right hand side with the histogram up here. Um, you can toggle down on the little triangles to show what you can edit in. Um, tone curve, HSL tabs, split toning, sharpening. Um, I would recommend to open all of them if you're just starting out uh, and go through them and, and, and see what they do. But today, we are fully focusing on the tone curve, okay? Now, this is a good point to remember, if you just literally downloaded Lightroom, if you just pay for the description, if you just downloaded it straight away, today it would look like this, okay? Um, which is slightly odd. You can push them up and down, but the mouse, as you can see, doesn't really let you go as far as you would want. It only kind of, it kind of does it for you. So down here you get tabs, highlights does the highlights, lights, darks, and shadows, okay? We don't want to use that because it's, it's too restrictive and it's too kind of, it clings on to kind of the line. Um, so what you need to do is go down to the right hand corner and click this little square with the line with the dot in the middle. Um, that will allow you to make your custom curve, okay? To flatten the point, if you're not um, happy with what you've done, you just right click and flatten curve or you can delete one control point, okay? So we'll start with the flat curve. Um, the channel is the RGB channel. So what that means is the whole general kind of exposure, lights, darks and everything to do with the photo and not colours, okay? While some shadows can increase saturation, it's not to do with putting colours in the photo, it's just the overall exposure and stuff like that. If you click the tab, you get red, green and blue. Um, so in there you can go in and separately edit the red, green and blue channels, okay? But I think I'll do that for a second video because that can get quite complex with those. So today we're just looking at the RGB channel, the whole, the, the main one together, just letting you know it's there so you have the, the correct one ticked. As you can see, we've already got a point in the white and already got a point in the black, okay? So as a general kind of rule in photography, when using the tone curve is to create an S, okay? That's what everyone says, that's kind of the going thing to do, is create an S. So what an S does, you can put one point here, one point there, and here, okay? So three points effectively five because you've already got these up here but it's three points you're adding to the line to the line and if you pull down the darks up the midtones a little bit and up the highlights you get kind of a 
flat looking S, right? So let me break down the whole square, okay? So if you take this square here, imagine those four squares make one big square, right? This is the dark area of the photo. Um, if I move this up and down, it will change the shadows and the blacks, okay? And here is the midpoint, also known as the midtones. So there it controls the midtones. And here, obviously, highlights, pretty self explanatory now, um, changes the highlights in the photo, okay? So with this photo, I mean, if, if I make an S, it becomes way too contrasty, I think, and it kind of bleaches out the whites in the top of the photo. So what you can do to fix this um, is go up to right to the top to this point here. Now, it kind of works the same here as it does the black point. Um, if I lift the black point, it's going to add fade to the photo, okay, as you can see that. Um, if you go too high, it's known as clipping, okay, the blacks are clipping. You can see that in the screen right now. It's going kind of a weird... It's like you've taken a permanent marker and drawn it on your screen. That's what it looks like. If you go over there, it's going to look horrible. So don't go that far um, with the blacks. If you pull up that, it's going to fade the blacks. Now back to the white. If it's too bleached, right, at the top, and the whites have kind of whited out, you can't see much. Um, and if the photo is overexposed already, and you don't have any detail anyway, you can go here and it will fade the whites. Whoops. It will fade the whites the same kind of way it does the black. So if you've overexposed your image and you can't maintain, retain the detail, you can always just fade the white so it gives you that softer look so it's not too harsh on the eye um, and you don't get kind of that contrasty white which doesn't look that great. So yeah, this is kind of a harsh S-curve at the moment. So what you can do, you can add more fade here. Um, you can pull up the shadows and you can bring down the highlights. Okay, so what it's already done, it's added some nice contrast with the grass um, and it's added some saturation in the rocks behind actually. That's what pulling the blacks down does. It brings back the kind of colour into the photo. But obviously it's still overexposed. So now we've got our S-curve kind of looking good. Or kind of what we want. And your highlights are still overexposed. That doesn't mean the S-curve is wrong at the moment. Because the S-curve is, is correct for the shadows down in the foreground and up to the body and stuff like that. Um, and it maintains the detail in the rocks. So what you all you have to do just go up to your basic tab, lower the highlights, and lower the exposure. Now you're thinking, oh shit, now I've lowered the exposure, the shadows look crap. So what you do is go down to the shadow tab and pull the shadows. So now, boom, before and after, we fix the photo with a nice tone curve, an S tone curve, adding some fade, and adding some softer whites. Now because you've pulled down the exposure and the highlights, you can go back and pump some more contrast into those whites so it doesn't look too faded, okay? if you need that. We've brought down the highlights, and the trick here is really the shadow bar, okay? So, to maintain your exposure in the photos, to get the blue back in the sky, you've had to lower the exposure. But then, you lost your shadows, so all you have to do is just bring them up. Just bring them up, and now we've got some detail back in the shadows, and there we go. It can be so effective to use this tone curve. Now, kind of the, the look you want with the tone curve, um, don't be afraid that it kind of looks ruined at the first place because you can go back to the basic tab and kind of correct it from there. Or you can go to the basic tab first um, and if you kind of lost some exposure in the highlights, you can bring that down um, and then you can adjust it in a tone curve accordingly to what you've done in the basic. Vice versa with the different tabs, okay? So this is looking good. Again, we can add a little bit more contrast here. Mid-tones, we can kind of uh, we can keep the same. If you pull them down, Kind of adds this nice moody effect. Highlights are looking good. Yeah. So overall we've kind of fixed this photo. Um, it's looking a bit cool at the moment, so I'll go up and warm it a little bit. There we go, nice. Got some nice warmth to the photo. And that's pretty much it. If you're kind of, if your editing is not so exaggerated, or you're you looking for that natural look, these basic kind of tips and points, um, which I've just done, will really help you with your edits. And also, the, the good thing is the tone curve, um, you can make presets of anything. So you can edit the tone curve how you like. If you go for 11% in the blacks to have that faded look, and throughout the, the tone curve is what your overall consistency is through Instagram, you can save that as a preset, and then you shoot some more photos, you can add that preset to your photos, um, and it will add the same tone curve across the, across the set you're doing. That's a great thing to have when you're kind of editing a set of photos, or you want your Instagram feed to look consistent um, across the whole of your feed, editing photos for a client, if you're doing five to 10 photos for a client, even 100 photos for a client, um, buying the toe curve across the whole lot of the photos, they're gonna look consistent all the way through, okay? It's a really good point to make, actually. 
when you're doing professional work or you just want to have your Instagram feed on lock, um, use the tone curve. It's a really, really good tool, guys. Um, definitely recommend it. Don't be intimidated by it. I mean, if you, what you take from today's video, go ahead and try it at home and go through the different points and see what they do. You know that the highlights are gonna change in the top end of the curve and the blacks are gonna change in the bottom half of the curve. Um, and tweak it however you want to get your feel out of the photo. Okay, you don't have to do that much else with the basic or the, um, the hue, saturation, or lumens, or only if you're going for that different hues um, in the photo, but the overall kind of making your feed and photos look consistent, um, the tone curve is key here. So that's that photo, you can see the before and after, we fixed it quite nicely. Um, and yeah, I've literally only done a few, a few things here. Highlight, shadows, exposure, and tone curve. As I said, I'll go on to the red, green, and blue in another video. Um, I think that's gonna be quite complex. It, it's a lot to do with kind of color grading in a whole as in the red curve, um, the opposite of red is green, and the opposite of blue is orange. So there's a whole lot of kind of things to talk about there, but I'll, I'll cover that in a different video. Let's go on to a different photo and just show you quickly what else it can do. And apologies for my laptop. I, I say that in every Lightroom story, but it's because I'm rendering the, the screen grabs at the same time. Um, so that's why it's making a racket. Okay, so another photo there. This is without a, a model in it, without my girlfriend in it. This is just a normal landscape shot. Again, this is at Law of Cove down in Dorset. Very nice area. I do recommend you go there if you want to get some awesome pictures of the coast of the UK. Okay, so we've got kind of a similar aspect here. We've got kind of dark shadows going across the rock where you really kind of want to get the textures back in there um, to show the rock face. Um, and we've got a nice blue sky. So what we can do with the tone curve, let's go in straight away. Let's add a point here. Similar kind of thing. Pull down that a little bit. Add some fade, 9%. Okay, so now we've enhanced the colors. We've enhanced the colors of the blue or the rocks but now the shadows are staying kind of dark and we can't really see the rock. So again, guys, what you've got to do is don't be afraid of this. Don't be like, oh, I've, I've ruined the photo. How can I get that back? I'm going to have to change this point to make it really kind of faded and kind of lost the contrast with it. Don't worry, don't do that. Get it to where a point where you like the look of the contrast. And then, guys, all it is, you go up to the shadows, bang, add it in, okay? Done. I mean, it looks kind of too saturated for me at the moment, but that's how you can retain um, your shadows if, if they have been lost, okay? Um, again, we can bring down the highlights to get more blue in the sky, mess around with exposure a little bit, and there we go, we've, we've kind of enhanced the photo um, and saved kind of the texture and the rock. If it's still not there, you can go up to this brush tool here, two circles, so the inner circle is where it's gonna Put the red on the mark is where it's going to put the mask on the most and the outside is the feathering um i choose 77 or around 70 to 80 with the feathering i don't want it too harsh so if i press zero here you can see where it masks and then if there's still shadows lost um you can bring them back either by shadows or the exposure there okay and also can add some clarity and there we go so what i would like to do with this image kind of my style, um, is go down to the hue saturation and luminance, head to the saturation bar, desaturate the blue, desaturate the yellow a little bit, keep the orange in, okay? Um, and now what I can do with the foreground of the image, I've selected the graduated filter, I can pull up like this, and anything under this line, these lines, is gonna be where you're gonna edit, okay? So I like to bring down this. So it just gives more mood to the photo it down a bit otherwise I think if that was too overexposed it, it looks too harsh on the image I think that looks better so I've changed where the shadows are I think that looks much better so your eye kind of follows kind of the foreground where the the highlights and the grass are and you can go to the little boat there and your eyes follow the rock round up to the hill there I think that's a much better kind of I've changed the kind of composition and exposure if that makes sense so guys, you can do a million things with this. Um, and then that took literally, what, five? No, not even five minutes, two minutes to do. Tone curve, mess around with the shadows and stuff. Um, and then obviously do my edit where I desaturate the blue um, and so forth. I'll, I'll do a lot more to this image, um, but it's just the basic kind of tools. This is what I do with the basic tools and the tone curve just to get it 
consistently looking like the other photos I post. Keep the fade the same. As I said before, you can make a preset, um, then you don't have to mess about with this every single time you do a photo. There is, obviously, you have to do tweaks if you applied it. It's not going to be the same on it, every photo, um, but at least it gives you that consistency in the, in the fade and the blacks. Um, you might have to change the midtones and stuff around to get it looking more consistent with the other photos. But yeah, guys, that's... I mean, tone curve it is, is such a huge, big factor. And yeah, guys, you've got to use it. I know a lot of people that don't or who are like, afraid of the tone curve, it's too in intimidating with the line and the points, they don't know what's going on. Um, but but just, just click around. And I hope you take a lot from this video, where the darks are in the square and the lights are. Once you get to know it, it's simple, guys. Then after a while, you can kind of find your style within the tone curve, and it kind of builds up from there. And your feeds, I tell you, it's gonna look, it's gonna look awesome. Implement your colors as well, and yeah, your, your photos are gonna look sick. I think that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, yeah. As I said, I'll go into the red, green and blue in another video. As I said, I think there's a lot to talk about there and that is when it really gets kind of... If you've got a unique style and you like kind of using split toning and stuff like that, that's what happens in the, re in the red, green and blue curves there. You can make some really, really cool stuff out of that. And I'll be filming, well, yeah, I'll be filming that video soon. So yeah, excited to do that one as well. But yeah, I just want to give you guys kind of an overlook on the tone curve. I hope you've taken some good points from this. Um, I hope you can implement it into your own photos and stuff and make your your photos better as well as being consistent with your photos as well It really does help the tone curve and uh, that is it I'll just put the before and afters up on the screen for you. I mean I clicked the tabs about ten times um, And we got some really nice results out of it such simple uh, Steps to follow and it makes your photos that much better no matter if it's overexposed or you've underexposed Customizing just a little bit in the tabs in the basic um, can get your photo back to looking nice. Cool, so guys, yeah, I hope you appreciate this video. Um, there's a lot more to come with Lightroom stuff. Also, I'm thinking about getting some more lenses, doing some more photo shoots uh, around my area as well. And obviously, car stuff as well if you want it. Cool, guys, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time, goodbye.